Uh, present, I'm a tree officer in the city of Stockholm, in Sweden, and uh, uh, I've been working with uh, uh, green infrastructure for uh, since uh, uh, 1976. And uh, uh, at first, I was a garden worker for 10 years, and then I was a manager for 10 years with uh, around 50, 60 employees. And uh, after that, uh, I have been uh, a buyer of uh, uh, services for trees and, uh, and uh, building, uh, uh, rebuilding streets and parks in the city of Stockholm, central part mostly. And so I have this extreme wide experience from, from the start, from the planting trees myself and planting plants and digging in the ground for 10 years. And, that's, and then uh, as a manager for 10 years, it has given me a, a fantastic experience and uh, that I have used for the last 17 years when I've been uh, working at the traffic department. Uh, and it has given me a big strength in my argumentation uh, with people and politicians and things like that. And uh, I feel safe in, in my work and uh, thank you. Uh, that's a really fantastic situation to be in. Soil for me is a, some, it's a substrate that will support life below the surface, uh, support life of the trees, support life of the microorganism and the microbes, so, uh, everything that should be in the ground. Today I will be speaking of urban soils and how you can use stone material, biochar and compost to uh, make a mixture that's almost impossible to destroy in the, in the, when you do the construction works in urban environment. That's one of the biggest problems, to find a, a substrate substrate <laughs> that really can take all these uh, heavy loads, this uh, heavy machinery that's used in this uh, kind of, in, of an environment when you build a city in the development areas. Since I started to work at the traffic department, I was also, my main uh, efforts have been to find a, a solution for the urban city trees. Uh, to find a way to get them to grow and be happy in, inside the city and really grow well. And uh, uh, yeah, we have really managed to do the, uh, find a solution in Stockholm. You look at the certification of biochar in uh, European Un Union, it uh, must be made of recycled material uh, and it's made by pyrolysis. You, you heat up the organic material without oxygen. Uh, in our case, uh, where we produce it in Stockholm, we, it's, it's around 750 degrees Celsius. And uh, uh, it transforms the organic material, the organic waste from the citizen, uh, the Stockholm citizens uh, garden waste. Uh, so we use that and transform it to biochar. Bio it's charcoal, uh, uh, but uh, we call it biochar because it's made from recycled material, and then we use it uh, for the the, the uh, planting pits in Stockholm, mostly for trees, but also for perennials and shrubs and everything. And uh, and the city citizens of Stockholm that deliver the uh, the uh, garden waste to our uh, uh, biochar plant where we transform it. Uh, they will give it give biochar for free to use in their gardens. Uh, so they engage in the climate, uh, uh, fighting the climate change in a way, because they, they bury the carbon dioxide uh, when they use uh, the biochar. Politicians love it because it's a part of the circular economy and you upgrade something that was a waste to something usable and that you even could sell before they paid uh, like 20, 28 pounds to get rid of one ton of this material, this waste, garden waste material. 
and now they get uh, 400 pounds paid for one ton of biochar. So it's quite a different deal uh, uh, compared to before. And it's such an old um, issue as garden, gardening that you still can find new ways uh, uh, how you treat plants and uh, what you call soil and uh, that's the most fascinating thing that, it, that there is other possibilities than uh, than you thought before and it's totally new ground that's open up and uh, when you look into the different pieces of it yeah everyone agrees yeah that's true <laughs> that's true and it's uh, we have heard it the, on this conference different speakers have just pointed on this uh, problem that we have solved with this um, uh, combination of material um, and most of all the aeration of the ground to keep it uh, uh, the oxygen in the ground and, and uh, yeah that's so fascinating that we could copy nature in a way and give uh, circumstance in the ground that really uh, helps all the living things to survive. It's a hard question. A lot of people really love trees already. Uh, Especially in, in Stockholm and Sweden, I don't think that's the problem really. Uh, most people just oh, want to protect the trees. That's not the problem. Then there's always some people that uh, have a car that gets dirty or they have some mm, uh, antenna that's shaded by the trees or something like that. But that's not of any importance in the big scale. So I, th I think especially in Stockholm the people are really they understand the value of the tree it's more problem with the the uh, uh, civil engineers that's uh, uh, responsible for road construction and things like that that fight is just amazing <laughs> how can it be but uh, yeah that's a, uh, definitely a harder harder but a lot of problems that they have in the urban environment we have this uh, um, particles flying around in the air uh, and trees can take care of them a uh, part of them uh, in, in a way and they have the carbon dioxide that they collect and uh, the the stormwater issue is so big so it's it's just started up uh, and if you can explain that if you want to go uh, and fish in the weekends you need to have a fish in the in the rivers or in the lakes uh, and the, if you don't uh, take care of the stormwater and clean the stormwater before it hits the lakes, uh, then you don't gonna have any fish after a while. And I think you really have to ed educate people so that they understand the wider uh, uh, importance of trees and what they can do to protect a lot of things in, in urban environments and, and further out uh, uh, outside the city because we pollute a lot of things with the, the things we uh, let go from the cities and we have to stop that to take care of it and the and, and water, storm water issue is extremely important so we have to collect it and let it uh, pass through soils compost uh, 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 living root system the mycorrhiza and the microbes take care of the the bad stuff and uh, and uh, yeah that's we have to to explain that so they understand it so they really understand the importance of it the basic thing is use stones uh, single size stones so you always have this porosity of 35 to 50 percent that's the basic thing you have to think of then you can mix in some organic material but you should never put any mineral fraction in it to block that space that you have because the space, the aeration in, in that porosity is the most important thing to get plants and trees 
especially trees to survive in cities. Other plants we have higher up, and, uh, but trees that are uh, trying to develop root system below a uh, hard surface, uh, completely sealed mostly, they have to have extremely open material. And if you don't have inlets that take in uh, water and uh, let the gas exchange to work, then you, it's clean stone materials. Uh, we have got so fantastic results the last years now, so we feel confident that we, we are at home in that case. Uh, so we have stopped using soil as uh, most people think of soil. And, and we just use this mix of crushed stone, compost and, and biochar. And we don't have any other uh, um, mineral fraction in that uh, combination just to keep the porosity as high as possible and uh, the stone material can give us 35 to 40 percent of porosity and if you put biochar uh, in it that by itself has a, a extremely good porosity up to 70 percent of por porosity in it and uh, uh, a compost mix or mulch mix uh, mixed with that biochar uh, we have found this solution to the problem.